Um, if I can ask you to please go ahead and take a seat and if you turn off any electronic devices that you may have with you today to avoid any distractions during our meeting, that will be appreciated. Uh, board, I'm going to apologize to you in advance. I'm not feeling well. And so, um, <laughs> that was a quick answer. So the, the, good news, yeah, the good news is I probably will be doing a whole lot of talking. Um, the bad news maybe for you guys is we'll be counting on you guys to ask all the questions. So uh, glad you guys are here. And staff, thank you for your time and thank you for choosing to be here or, or uh, I guess maybe even being forced to be here for some of you. Uh, but this is an important conversation, important topic for our school district. Um, obviously, I know we've got some very serious um, concerns we've got to take a look at when it comes to growth in our community, which in my opinion is a blessing to us. Uh, but with that also comes the challenges of how do we keep up with that growth and make sure that we have adequate funding uh, to stay in line with that. So uh, that said, Mr. Phelps, I'm going to come to you first. And if you want to take the lead, and then I'm sure Clyde's going to be going through a lot of this with us. But Yes. Hi. I appreciate it. Um, I, like the chairman said, we uh, definitely have uh, quite a few things to discuss today, uh, very important topics. And you know, I think what you're going to see today is uh, you know, some of our funding concerns, some of the things that uh, we, we've been looking at uh, doing as a school district. And uh, hopefully we can come up with some solutions as to some, some ways to fund some of those projects. Uh, we're going to kind of divert a little bit uh, before we get into our, our growth management piece of the meeting, uh, but we want to start with E-rate. I know that we had kind of an A and B, but we're going to start with B. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Angela Marino uh, to get us started with the E-rate update. You're smart because you're going to get left behind if you don't do it beforehand anyway with all this growth management. <laughs> well, I have a big, big chunk of the second one as well, so uh, we'll, we'll get That's through true. this together. I, I appreciate the opportunity uh, to share with you some information about what our federal E-rate program is all about. And I think you're going to see that it's going to connect very closely with some of the information that you're going to see and hear tonight in regards to growth management because our E-rate funding is definitely some one of the pieces that we use that dovetails with this to help us offset some of our expenses for capital expenses when it comes to some of our technology needs. So we're going to go through a little bit of that. Um, for the benefit of everyone, I'm going to make absolutely no assumptions that you know and understand how E-rate works. So we're going to begin with a very brief overview. If you will bear with us, our presentation boils down to a maximum of 10 minutes and we will go through what the E-rate program is, how it works with our district, how it supports our funding, what the portion is that is charged to the school district and what is covered through the federal E-rate program. We'll have an opportunity to show you an actual example of how E-rate works in the past and some of the changes that have been enacted this year with the new E-rate guidelines. We have three folks on staff with me who work very, very closely with the E-rate. In fact, this actually falls directly under their purview in their department. Uh, the director is Dr. Mel Pace, and under him is Carol Edder and Martha Bowers. And Carol and Martha are the two who are, for lack of a better term, in the weeds. Uh, they're the ones who file all the E-rate forms. They're the ones who work with our staff when it comes to completing the E-rate applications and they are directly involved. So we're going to turn it over with your permission directly to Carol and Martha. I will pass out a copy of the presentation that they will be using as well. Great, thank you and welcome ladies. Thank you for giving us the opportunity today to give you a brief overview of the federal E-rate program. In 1996, Congress directed the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, to establish the E-rate program. This program ensures affordable internet access and telecommunication services for schools and libraries by providing discounted services and equipment. <coughs> Discounts are based on the number of students participating in the National School Lunch Program. The E-rate program has strict rules for schools and libraries to follow during bid processes and selection of vendors to provide services and or equipment. 
The E-rate program is funded by contributions from telecommunication carriers. The FCC cap program funding at $2.25 billion per year until 2010, when the FCC began to adjust the cap annually for inflation. The district applies for funding each year for E-rate eligible services and or equipment. Every application is reviewed and examined by USAC auditors to verify program compliance. All schools and non-instructional facilities in the district benefit annually from discounted services for telephone, internet access, and network connectivity. The types of services are classified as priority one and priority two. Telecommunication services such as telephones, internet access, and network connectivity are identified as priority one. Network infrastructure equipment, such as routers, switches, wireless access points, and some cabling are classified as priority two. For the 2014-2015 funding year, the priority one applications totaled $1.2 million, with a discount of 83% resulting in estimated reimbursements of $1,011,000. The Priority two applications totaled $3.9 million, but USAC denied all Priority two applications for the funding year. For us or for everybody? Everybody. <clears throat> this chart shows the amounts the district received in 2013-14 and estimated reimbursements from USAC for telecommunication charges in 2014-15 and 2015-16. The decrease in the amount of reimbursements in this category of service is a result of a new contract with better pricing with our service provider and the higher discount percentage of 90%, which will take effect in 2015-2016. The E-rate modernization order, effective July 1st, 2015, is the first major change to the program in 18 years. USAC will change the terms used to describe services from Priority 1 and Priority 2 to Category 1 and Category 2. First, the FCC took action to begin closing the gap in available services to schools and libraries by making access to funding for Wi-Fi more equitable. From program inception in 1997, the spending cap was $2.25 billion annually. In 2010, the cap was adjusted for inflation. The FCC has reset the cap to $3.9 billion annually. Category 2 funding support for schools over a five-year period will be capped at $150 per student, multiplied by the district's discount percentage. There was previously no cap on funding. Certain legacy services like paging and student email are no longer eligible. In addition, voice services will be phased out over the next five years. The FCC will be designating preferred master contracts to make nationwide pricing more transparent. At the most recent USAC training, the FCC had not published a list of contracts. In an attempt to streamline the application process, there will be no technology plan requirements and all forms must be submitted online. The period for retention of documents has been extended from five years to ten years from the last date to receive services. For example, all records relating to a service ending <coughs> June 30th, 2015 must be retained until July 1st, 2025. The goals of the order outlined on this slide have positive and negative impacts on the district, some of which cannot be understood as yet. First, let's discuss the positive impact on our district. The discount percentage for Category 1 services, which includes internet access and network connectivity, will increase to 90%. The discount percentage for the last two years was 83%. Although the district's need for internet access and network connectivity continues to increase, the net cost to the district will decrease based on current bandwidth usage. This is a result of the higher discount percentage,
coupled with improved pricing in our newest contract with our service provider. All schools will benefit when applying for Category 2 funding because the combined discount percentage calculated for the district will be used instead of individual school discount rates. For example, in the past, schools with fewer students participating in the National School Lunch Program received a lower discount and many times were not approved due to lack of funds. Now, all schools in our district will use the same combined discount percentage. Unfortunately, there are negative impacts on our district. A school cap in funding will be established. Each school will have a budget of $150 per student multiplied by the district's discount rate. This is the maximum amount that E-rate will fund for Category 2 services for a period of five years. In the past, there was no funding cap. Is that 150 is per year or is four or five years? Retire for five years. <clears throat> In addition to the funding of cap established for each school, the highest discount percentage will decrease to 85%. On the next slide, you will see an example of how these two changes impact one school. Finally, the discount percentage for voice services, that's voice over IP telephone service and traditional landlines, will decrease by 20% annually until the funding support for these legacy services is phased out. The last funding year, USAC approved applications for Priority 2 was 2011-2012. The district received E-rate support for three of the 11 applications that were submitted. One of the three schools approved for infrastructure equipment was Westside K-8, and the discount percentage was 90%. To compare the old and new program rules, we're going to look at Westside K-8. The graph on the left reflects the total cost to complete a total upgrade of the switches, wireless access points, uninterruptible power supplies, and cabling. Under the old rules, there was no cap in funding, and the discount percentage was at the highest available because of the large percentage of students participating in the National School Lunch Program. Using the same number of students as a baseline enrollment, the graph on the right reflects the same equipment cost using the new rules. Under the modernized E-rate program rules, an individual school is allowed a budget cap over a period of five years. The budget is calculated by multiplying the student enrollment times $150 per student times 85%, which is the highest discount rate possible. Therefore, the district is only eligible for $182,962.50 over a period of five years. That would be funding year 2015-2016 through funding year 2019-2020. The net cost to the district would have increased over $280,000. As a result of these changes in program rules, the district's strategy to leverage E-rate funding for support is changing. For the funding year beginning July 1, 2015, the district strategy for Category 2 funding support will shift from a total upgrade of a school's network infrastructure to basic upgrades to wireless network components. Three of the 11 school applications that will be submitted are illustrated on this slide. The advantage to the budget allocation is that schools with lower percentages of student population participating in the National School Lunch Program, such as Hickory Tree Elementary, that were never able to receive funding support for infrastructure equipment can now be eligible using the district's discount percentage. The disadvantage to the budget allocation is that over the period of five years, no school will receive enough E-rate funding support for a complete infrastructure upgrade. Unfortunately, the district will be responsible for funding the shortfall for network equipment upgrades. Questions? Okay. We're ready. Specific questions. So these uh, these applications are sent in on a school by school basis to the county, and then the county is that how does that work, Ma'am? The um, we work with closely with Technology Services, uh, Russell Holmes Group, and they make a determination as to what equipment needs to be upgraded, 
and then closely we work with purchasing and then we go through the e-rate application process. We handle it all at the district level. All of the district right, levels. Yes. Could but you? Funding is school wide, but funding is specifically for a school. When you receive funding, it's for that school. For that school, and it's the equipment can't be moved for a certain period of time. Okay, okay. I've got a little bit of a disconnect. The, our funding is basically going down on all these categories, and yet the total funding mm -hmm. went up a billion and a half dollars. So where is it, are we, where is that going? Are we not asking something, or, I mean, is there, is there an area we're not looking? Why, uh, nothing's changed in our population, it doesn't seem like. The rules have changed. The modernization rules that I went over, the positive and negative impacts, mm -hmm. the FCC is changing the rules on us. So the um, funding for network connectivity, so our WAN connection to the internet, that is going up, which is good because we're increasing bandwidth. Mm -hmm. But the priority to the infrastructure equipment in the schools, that's going down. And that's where we have some major um, upgrades that need to be done. You showed us the, the back three schools here. I can't remember what they were, but um, I'm assuming are there another 25 schools just like this? This is just a we? sample. Okay, that is just. Yeah, that's just, just three of the 11. What, what, is, what is our total shortfall in 2015-16? Do we know? Martha, do we have a grand total? Of what our <clears throat> totals are going to yeah, we have, we have a total of what our applications are. So we're going to be um, the bid that we just recently um, conducted that will be on the February 3rd board meeting. Mm -hmm. The total hardware cost for that is going to be $957,444.58. And out of that, we're projecting that um, we will have enough to cover that for our E-rate funds. But then we've got about 26000 of that, which is considered ineligible equipment. That would be like lightning arresters. So there's certain equipment that we need that E-rate does not fund at all. And then there will be additional costs that Russell's group's coming up with for cabling and some other items. This is your total need for the county? No, that's just for the 11 applications. The 11 applications. Mm -hmm. Is the intent of these changes to um, spread this pot of money out over a larger base of uh, schools and districts throughout the United States, or is it to contract the actual amount of spending because the cap's going up? <clears throat> But it doesn't necessarily mean that, this, that the funding is going up. Is that accurate? Well, over the past couple of years, Martha and I noticed a trend in the, what was called Priority One services, mm -hmm. that the amount of applications from all the schools around the country kept going up. And we noticed that Priority Two funding was, there wasn't enough money left to fund any Priority Two. That's why the last funding year was 2011 to 2012. So by increasing that gap, they're hoping that they will have enough money to start funding the priority two. And by putting a cap per student, more schools are going to be able to get money. Right. And then is it, um, it's directly related to the number of students on the National School Lunch Program. And so I imagine that the correlation then is that that is also expanding throughout the nation. So thus more are qualifying and being able to access this pot of money. Right. Board, any other questions? Okay. Um, thank you for the presentation yeah, and the information. Thank you. Thank Angela, you. anything additional on this that you wanted to cover or just for the no, sake I, of update? I, this was purely for the sake of information and sharing with you because you are going to be seeing the agenda item coming in the February uh, packet. And we wanted to make sure that you had some background information of how the E-rate funding formulas had changed over the year. When we get that, she just talked about the 970,000, mm -hmm. 957,000 that's almost mm -hmm. fully funded. Obviously, there's a big chunk that's not. And right. I guess that's the number I'm looking that's, for, is what we thought we would get versus what our shortfall is going to be. That would be based on our total need, which I can that's, definitely I guess that's work on and get that to you. Okay. Yes, sir. Can and then uh, board members, you probably already know this, but this obviously has an impact on us, but it has a direct impact on a key initiative of the school district, which is the Bring Your Own Device initiative that we've been putting in place as well and making sure that we're increasing our technology, our bandwidth, and our access throughout our campuses. So um, thank you, Angela. Thank you. Um, I know we're going to get into the growth management portion. I do want to recognize that we have uh, representatives from the city of Kissimmee. Mike, it's good to see you from the county as well, Don and Beth. 
growth management is here as well. We want to thank you guys for being here and choosing to be a part of this. And then also the association executive from the Osceola Realtors is here as well. If I missed anybody, I apologize, but I did notice that you guys came in and we appreciate you choosing to be a part of this conversation. All right, can you hear us back there? Yeah. All right, Clyde. Good evening. Uh, <laughs> I can't be quite as succinct as uh, Angela was, where she said she'll take ten, ten minutes. minutes, and uh, not sure that's going to. You get seven, Clyde. You get seven. Going to work, but <clears throat> the, the the first part of what we're going to go over is our needs. Um, you've seen this prior at a uh, prior mm -hmm. workshop. Uh, we also went over it with the previous board. Um, we have adjusted our numbers somewhat, but as you can see from uh, the page uh, that Todd's passing around right now, <clears throat> we've got about $650 million worth of unfunded needs for the next five years. Part of that, um, if we go through it briefly just for the audience, and there are some copies, Todd, correct, mm -hmm. um, for audience members. Um, Capacity needs that we uh, currently are projecting based upon conversations with the two cities and the county planning groups um, with my planning staff uh, showing what the projections are looking like. Um, the large number for 15-16 would certainly show a high school. We know that we need a high school. You, know, you guys know all that. Um, but there are some other uh, schools on the outer years and we have that detailed report for you as well. Um, to go into it, we also have needs for portables. That's even including if we built all the schools that we needed. There's still going to be some spots where we need portables. The bigger thing, when you look at it, it may not total as much, but what we're missing and lacking from funding currently, um, where we do get impact fees that, that, that do offset the capacity somewhat, um, it's certainly not able to keep up with all of it with our debt service and, and uh, the other areas that we have to cover um, would, would be our comprehensive renovations. And that's taking our schools that are getting up to 25 years and older and going in and doing a cyclical replacement of all of the um, uh, equipment, <coughs> air conditioning, roofing, going in and, and refreshing those schools. There is a, is a cost with that but that allows us to get another 25 years out of those schools. If we push that out, you're going to end up with 40, 45 year old schools that you've never touched and, or, or done a, a comprehensive renovation. So that's really an important key. Um, along with our annual maintenance cost of taking care of what we already have, um, Mr. Munis has put together the transportation needs that, that is not all new buses to replace the growth or, or to catch the growth but it's to replace the current buses and that's what we're missing right now where he was on a um, an 11 to 13 year cycle on replacements we're pushing that out 15 16 17 years if we don't do something those buses will go 300,000 miles and they really should should come off the road but we're you know we're I don't think we're over that on a lot of them but you're going to get to that point if we're not careful <clears throat> The bigger cost would be Angela's um, infrastructure needs for technology. That's huge. A lot of that's mandated from the state. You know, the technology uh, requirements that we're having to, to meet now are not the same as when the majority of the schools were constructed. Uh, the cabling is, is um, not able to, to capture what we need speed-wise, and then we don't have the hardware and everything uh, systems. Um, also, we have media and technology, um, which is Mel's area. That's all the, the smart boards and, and all of the new um, technology that we have to meet, which goes way beyond smart boards, I know. Um, we put some land cost in there because we're going to have to um, eventually, we've got, we've banked some property right now, but if we grow, we're going to have to start looking at some, uh, some property out there. And then we have ancillary facilities. And that's going out if we, um, we need to look at a bus barn um, on the west side. You know we have Horizon. It's on the Horizon campus. Um, however, it's not a full bus barn. It's really a fueling yard and a parking lot is what it is. So um, we would look at something where we could house um, uh, transportation parts, perhaps have an uh, ancillary maintenance facility in the same 
building and yard and it would cut down on our fuel and response time and everything to that side of the county um, so so that that's where we're at you, you guys have all seen this you you know we've talked about this uh, numerous times we've shared um, at growth management you know that there's certain unfunded needs that we have well this is this is where we're at and and every other month I've been trying to schedule a facility workshop with you guys to go over everything and I thought it was important at this time um, just with everything going on that we have got to sit down and buckle down and figure out what we're going to do because I'm telling you there's a train coming if we don't could get into double sessions um, could be one thing that we could end up on um, there, there's just a numerous uh, things out there we could end up hate to say it but like Lake County or, or some of the other districts that don't meet class size and get penalized at the state level that has its um, own ramifications on us so um, I'm sure we don't want to do that and and I think it's important and I'm so glad that the the county manager and, and the city manager from Kissimmee are here and, and Miss Knight uh, so that we can maybe get some collaboration going perhaps with the other governments or some some kind of dialogue going as far as where we're at um, I could talk all night I'm I'm right up there with Larry Walters on that you know I can talk if y'all want but I don't think y'all want me to talk all night you probably want to hear from Todd Todd can go over more of the funding options and everything that we have so with that being said you know Todd I'd kind of turn it over Mr. I just want to ask one question yes, sir. I, I know previous to uh, to my being uh, on the board here, yeah, you guys had a workshop and you and, and you were talking about the number of three hundred million, and uh, it was three hundred million. I think that was the the go bond was was three hundred. Is that correct? Well, we've and talked now, about what we would go after. Yeah, but I, this is our unfunded needs. I don't think if we and Todd can explain that in a few minutes of what that what a three hundred million dollar go bond would cost. You know what would that cost the property owners? Um, I think that's some of the, the discussion we've had is probably that three to four hundred million dollar threshold. I mean, I, that's personal. I don't know what you guys would even consider um, wanting to put out there. But he'll go over those numbers in just a moment. Okay, Todd, to Mr. Booth's question, and for the board and the audience's mm -hmm. uh, benefit. Uh, making a distinction between the numbers we had been previously talking about. In fact, last time you were with us as well, we were talking about a $260 million uh, new student station capital need and the difference between that number and this number um, and what the variables are that brought us to this point today. Um, I think that's going to be helpful, and that's what a lot of people have been he hearing from us, <clears throat> excuse me, is $250 million capital need. Um, and there's other components that are being calculated into this that I think everybody's going to need to understand to have the comfort level. Mm -hmm. uh, before I even get started, this is really an informal uh, discussion, and, um, and so I set it up to be informal. And as I, as I work through this, um, please stop and ask me questions along the way. I, I do want to introduce your financial advisor for the school district, Julie San Maria, our RBC Dane on um, cap, Capital Capital Markets, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Good to see you again. Um, and she's going to um, assist me with this um, presentation to you. Um, one thing I, I do want to go back to what um, Clyde was saying too is that as a sta um, Clyde had the opportunity to add some talent to his department that really helped look at all of our needs here in the district. So that's one of the reasons why I think that the number has increased a little bit, but I can let Clyde address that further mm -hmm. later on. Um, one of the things that before we even go out for any type of um, referendum is we would want to um, propose on doing a um, economic impact fee study just to make sure that the numbers that staff's coming up with that it can be su supported through this economic impact fee study. You would support the study? Or yeah, you said oppose it. We, we would use this study to support staff's recommendation okay. for that. Did I say it? You, you said oppose it. You, you said oppose it. Oppose <laughs> it. Yeah. I caught so, so I, I, well, that's I, what I heard. Unless it's a trip on the yeah. yeah. tongue there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to take this opportunity why you have you here, so I'm going to go a little off topic first on the capital. I want to talk about your general fund. So this is a perfect platform to do that because when you're looking at um, 
your capital fund, you're also looking at your general operating fund at the same time. So I want to talk a little bit about your cap, uh, your general fund, and that's the first handout in this, which has numbers down the side, line numbers. This is a, um, what you're looking at is the Florida Education Finance Program funding comparison. This shows you where we ended last year for our final calculation for the 2013-14 school year, and as of the third calculation. One of the things I want to share with this, um, um, with you is that Unweighted full-time equivalent students did grow by roughly 1,099, or we'll just say round up to 1,100. The weighted FTE students also grew um, by 1,114. Um, and uh, the weighted is really de um, dependent on the needs of the students, so they apply a weighting factor to that. So, for if you're an East, East Alt, or I'm sorry, an ESE student, the 254 you'd have additional services, so they weight that a little bit more. So that's why you see that. As we're going through this, you, we're, everything's based on for your local funding, your tax rolls, line 14. You can see your tax rolls increase by 1.3 billion. I wanna say, I don't wanna go into too much detail on this, except for sharing with you that I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump all over this report with you is that line 61 of this report it's showing that we went up by 2.19% um, 2 funding over the prior year as you know when we start at the beginning of the year that number was actually a little bit higher that percentage one of the things that really hit us hard this year that the state under projected the total student growth and did not reserve any funds aside for that expected growth. So all districts across the state just got hit with a, um, a proration of funds available. You just got hit with a $1.3 million um, proration of funds available. So what does that mean? It means that I'm just taking $1.3 million right off the top. So the projected operating deficit in your general fund right now is $5.1 million. We're having a hard time meeting that goal. I just want to share that with you. One of, one of the things that... So that's five point that's just coming out of our reserves this year that we're paying. Yeah, we're, um, we're educating students and we're not going to pay for it. That's basically what's happening. But that's but the yes the payment is, re, is through a reduction in reserves. I'm, I'm going to... I'm, if I can't... And we're working on revenue projections right now, um, readjusting everything both in the capital fund and in the general operating fund. If, if I can't get at the balance again to that 5.1, I'm going to have to ask this board to go a little further in the red. So the 5.1 does not include that one point something shortfall? Right, not, right now it does not. Okay. That Correct. was your original okay. budget that was brought to this board in September. Okay. And I'd also point out it was the intent to um, only utilize reserve funding for this year and begin to move us off of that and that's been a process right. that we've been working through correct because it's unsustainable the pot's it's thinning and it's just poor poor management mm -hmm. yeah. for the long run yeah. I, we, we put reasonable reserves aside for this stuff that happens with the state but not 1.3 million dollars and we we, uh, we operate a really tight budget one thing, one thing I also want to share with you um, before I move off of this is that um, we had a total state funding increase of $15.5 million. Um, you think, well, that's a, that's a sizable chunk of money. You know, how are we using that money? Well, if you look at, if we go back up to lines um, one through six, um, where it talks about your unweighted FTE, the traditional schools grow, grew by 588. That's a really small elementary school, so you have to add additional instructional units, administrators, support personnel, you have to add supplies. So you're really eating up, just from that natural growth, about $5.5 million. <coughs> charter schools also grew, and charter schools are part of this whole equation here. And We're growing at a disproportionate rate compared to what our number of students are in charter schools. Do we know why that is? In other words, we've got 15% of our kids in charter schools, but of our new students, we had 60% good. Yeah, we... Or, I'm sorry, 30, we're, 30, 40%. Yeah, we're seeing a greater growth in the charter school MK scholarship program. Did I answer your question? 
officer. No, I, I see the growth. Yeah. I'm yeah. curious yeah. if we know why. Um, I believe it's, that's a trend all over the state. It's a trend all over the state. Yes, yeah. statewide. Yeah. Um, McKay scholarship was this, um, 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 a little surprise. We didn't expect a 21% growth there mm -hmm. this year. Charter schools carve out a part of that. So since they're growing, the, the amount of funding that's part of this funding formula, about 4.5 goes to the charter schools. So really you're left with $5.5 um, $5 million for unfunded um, testing um, mandates that we have to bandwidth increases to make sure that we can um, um, do those online instructional <coughs> tests. Um, FRS rate increase that costs the school district $1 million there. So as you can see, it, it just got absorbed that fast. Right, but let's go back to something you said just a minute ago, that mm -hmm. you look at these 1,100 kids taking roughly $5 million because that's what an elementary takes. But a lot of this stuff is incremental. I mean, you know, adding 10 kids to each school doesn't, you don't start adding administrators and everything else. So some of this should be, is it not a little cheaper than our first kid? Class size well, comes into play there as well, and having to comply no, with I get it. That. Yeah. But, it but, but still, if you had a teacher, you're not adding a new lunchroom and an administrator. Um, the ancillary costs. Well, yeah. well you, 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 you are. You have a little increase just for like bus transportation. Same thing there. Okay. Um, um, transportation, um, <coughs> let me, this kind of touches a little bit on that. If you draw your eyes down the line, 32 for student transportation, they gave us $52,000. We know we added, extra. I'm sorry, extra, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. we, we know that we just added three new bus routes. So that cost that you, you know, you have to add three buses and then you have to add drivers and you have to add also the attendance on the buses. So we're not receiving the funding at the level that we should be here um, to adequately um, not only support your infrastructure, but also to give a little bit more to add for um, those benefits like or raises um, for our staff. Uh, FRS rate increased so that it's costing a million dollars more this year than it did the prior year. Just, just I don't want to be, keep beating this thing, but I'm mm -hmm. sure I understand. Mm -hmm. We are sharing in this reduction proportionally with That's all correct. our account. This that is, is correct. Not, okay. It's all that in is the correct. state, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Todd, you may not have the number off top, I do. but um, with the 52000 additional with regard to the transportation revenue, what is the cost for those additional roughly three additional routes so that the board has a decent number to compare by? Well, you just you have to add three new buses, which is $110,000 a piece, roughly, um, and then you have to add for um, the staff to operate those buses and any, any additional um, costs associated with, um, and I don't have that exact number Sounds off the like top. Close to four hundred thousand. That's 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 what it really is coming up to. Um, do we do we literally have to add three new buses, or do we have enough buses that could handle a three uh, route increase, or is it a literal fact that every I know every bus is being used because I know we've got reserves and backups and Mark cycling everything through Mark mm -hmm. back there. Um, are we physically having to buy three new buses or? just yep. in theory because we're needing to keep enough of the backup and the ones that are in maintenance right now well i'll, I'll actually defer that to mark because he can he can answer it but we added how many new bus how many buses did we actually add because it was not only for new buses but we had to add replacement here's, buses too here's and karen's here as well the bank or, or transportation it's um it's kind of an interesting factor we we actually have 300 uh, quite around 390 buses in we run about 330 every day, but every 28 days a bus has to come out of the circulation and go through inspection. So a percentage of all of our buses are out every 28 days. So even though we may have 60 extra buses, there are so many buses being inspected that day. In addition, when things were really, really tight, 2007, 8, 9, we didn't purchase any buses at all. And last year we purchased 10 buses. So basically we were, we were on a schedule to replace buses every 39 years and you guys know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense in reality are you buying when you add students are you buying three new buses this year uh, we're so far behind in how many buses we really should be should have bought prior to this that yeah we're really going to be buying those buses we, we bought new buses this year but 
they're not going to they're not going to keep up with with what we have. Uh, we have a lot of buses currently on the road that are 1999s. So how many how many of you are driving 16 year old vehicles right now? <coughs> Our buses drive 30,000 plus miles a day and five million miles. A day. <laughs> we're, okay, I drive. We're school board members. Old. We all drive old. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen your paycheck. Yeah, you got Yeah. Um, thank you, Mark. So we bought 10 new buses last year. How many did we buy this year? 14. 14 this year. Thank you. Hey, is there any? Did I answer your question? Okay. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and move off of the general operating fund now, and we're going to focus on the capital fund. I, I wanted to provide a, 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 a history of where we were, um, show you where we are now, and what we are projecting by taking the five-year capital plan and merging it with the unfunded needs. So this actually just shows in 2011, and that would be your first column there, if you go, go down all the way to the bottom where it says fund balance, we, we started in 2011 with 166 million point four. To, 166.4 million dollars. As you can see, that number has dwindled over the years uh, to, um, to the, where we're closing out this current um, last year, excuse me, 2014 year, where we're left with an estimated about 41.2 million dollars or three um, carrying us into the current fiscal year that we are in right now. This was already shared with the board and on September 12th when we presented the final budget um, for your approval. This is your um, a chunk of your five-year capital plan. I'm just showing the current year right now. If we look at, we're carrying in the total beginning fund balance of $41.3 million. And we're showing that estimated revenues are roughly about $54.9 million. That appropriations this year were estimating in the original plan for capacity and non-capacity purposes, total appropriations is 78 million, 78.2 million dollars. So when you're set, when it's all said and done, and I provided the detail for you in the back here, um, the total ending fund balance is roughly around 17.9 um, or 17 or 18 million dollars. So, in the next two pages, this just kind of breaks breaks it down for you for capacity purposes and non-capacity sources. So now I'm going to, now on this report, it's called the Capital Pro Forma. It looks just like this one here. So we actually, when you take the two funds, we actually reduced our reserves by 20, mm -hmm. six, seven million. We're projected to, yes. Mm -hmm. Out of only 60? Out of 60, yeah. I'm 41. Not. 41. Yeah, 41 plus the other fund had. No, no, the to total funds together is 41. The total funds together. Right? Yeah, yeah, and it's actually really all your, it's, uh, the whole thing is your capital projects fund, mm -hmm. but it gets broken out into different fund numbers to account for mm -hmm. what's capacity sources, what's non-capacity sources of funds. So the change in 14 was a 16.1 million clearance, and the yeah. change in 15 would be that 26. Yeah. If they spend everything that was appropriated in the story. Current. And the minimum balance that you have to keep is 10%. At, at least 10% of your revenues, estimated revenues for that year. For capital. Yeah. yeah. So. For emergencies. That's a little low, because your capital, your capital funds works a little, little differently than your general operating fund. The board has a 6% reserve there. On your capital fund, it's more. There's more exposure to any unknowns regarding hurricanes or anything, natural disasters that could occur, where you would need those available funds to 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 um, pay for those um, particular things that come up. But I'm sure you're going to go over this, but from 41 to 17, so that means the next year it's zero. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. leading into. Okay. I'm leading <laughs> into. That's, that's right. I know you're probably <laughs> going there, <laughs> right? Um, the next 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 page of the report says capital pro forma fiscal years 2016 through 2020. It's it's the gray one. It looks like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what I did is I, I took the five year capital plan that was in the board in in, the, in your budget and I and I stacked it on top of um, facilities and technologies unfunded needs. 
So, so you can see one picture of what everything, what it looks like all together. So if we look at, um, we can, we're, we're, for 2014, the very first column there again, or a couple columns in, 2014-15, go all the way down, it says projected ending fund balance. That's carrying in from where we were projected we're going to end this current year, okay? So that will be the starting point for 2015-16. Now these are all your, pro your, your reoccurring projects that's really covered in your current year. You still have to pay for um, 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 technology infrastructure, school computer refresh. You have all those costs associated with maintenance department, facilities, um, debt service payments, that's all coming in here. Now we drop down to the, uh, the bottom of this report where it says projected unfunded needs. It was taken at our original draft that you saw here mm -hmm. and putting it right, right down here in this report. You can see year by year, if we were to take on these projects, what the actual projected shortfall would be. So over the life th through tw um, 19, I'm, I'm going to do it by fiscal year, it's just easy. By fiscal year 2020, you projected have um, an operating deficit or a, a operating fund balance deficit of six hundred and four point four million dollars. If you were to take on all these projects, and that is including the unfunded <coughs> needs, is there any questions so far on, on, on this document? The the eighty four million and fifteen sixteen that you would have projected, does that include the build of the Boggy Creek High School? Yes, I am sure of that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not something we can do in the, our current situation, but that's what's in your projections here. Right. And we would never, uh, we would not want to start a school until we have sure, funding sure, for sure. it. So that's why it's shown in that here. Okay. And, and then to that point, that's next year $150 million and we're no even close to that so take 75% to 85% of that product list and mix it mm -hmm. so we're not going to have any money to do any of it in the current state. Yeah. That's correct. <clears throat> the next page of the, this is ju just a um, pie chart representation of what you see on the, on the previous page. <clears throat> um, Tim, thank you for allowing me to steal this one from you. Mm -hmm. um, Good visual. It's a very great, it's a great visual. Mm -hmm. And um, and my corner actually helped with this too. So kudos my, my to my crayons. My crayons came in very handy. <laughs> I was yeah. just, he colored the, the red and the green. And, uh, yeah. You <laughs> notice I stayed in the line. Yeah. <laughs> your, 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 your total needs are 875 million, 876 million dollars over the, um, these years. The resources that you have available to you, including that little pot of your um, general fund at the beginning of the year, that's seventeen million dollars. You have two hundred. That's two hundred and seventy-one point five million. That's the, all your resources. So, if you were to fund all these projects, you would have a, you would have a unfunded needs of really six hundred and four. You would leave yourself with no reserve at all. Any questions on that? Not specific to that. Are you going to get to projected a business advisory board impact fee and sales tax collection? Yes, I, I can do that. Okay. okay. What is our, do our uh, current uh, bond documents and covenants have a required reserve for us to be holding or not? No, not for your certificates of participation. The sales tax revenue bonds may have one. We are looking at being able to refinance those because the first call date is in 2017 and rates are very low as we get closer to the call date. This is something that's economical. So we could have an opportunity to release that reserve, but it's, it will be a small amount, relatively speaking. And I'd point out as well that our staff has worked diligent over the last couple of years to seek those opportunities and have, have found additional resources for us in doing those refinancing options. And we appreciate your support and work on that. And in fact, Julie's, um, I'll mention it now, Julie's helping me right now with, ident we just carved out two more. It's our 2007 sales tax and our 2004 um, four corners, four corners mm -hmm. um, that 
um, we're looking at refunding hopefully by the end of this fiscal year. So there's a lot of work that the staff's working on right now to try to. I think this is what Tim probably wants to talk about. Oh, no, I, I'm going to come back to that. Yeah. Thank you. In, in a business advisory um, board meeting that happened or that occurred this last Wednesday, um, that we've made adjustments to the estimated revenues that are not reflected in your current um, report yet because we're still um, adjusting all the revenue numbers. Yeah, is that something that's... No, it's, you oh, don't okay. have it to handle, okay. but it, it would be actually part of your... If you go back to this report right here, mm -hmm. and if you look at... You have your capacity and non-capacity sources. That's This is the document I'm going to talk about right now. If we look at the revenues associated for the impact fees, re estimated revenues for this year, when we start at the beginning of the year, we estimated based on the business advisory um, um, committee board members' recommendations, impact fee revenues, we estimated to be $17 million for this year. I since went back to them and we are re advising those um, or adjusting those numbers upward to 21.5. So we do have a little bump there for impact fee revenues. One of the things, though, I want to I want to mention here is that uh, um, that's a conservative number still. Um, when we're working with that board, um, we like to um, make sure that we have a, a little buffer there. That we the original projection there, what we were showing based on prior year's trend was more in the twenty six million dollar, but we took a more of a conservative estimate with this board that. Um, we would just um, bump that estimated revenues up to $21.5 million. Any questions for me on just on the yeah. impact? Yeah, question. Do you feel the high side's 26? I'm sorry? You feel the high side could be 26, though? It, 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 could, it could be based on what we're seeing that materialized last year. So that's how we're following this pattern, which could reduce, this will affect the whole picture. But your revenues adjust every year. If your impact fee revenues happen to go down next year, that affects the overall picture. You have that inverse relationship. Um, I previously sat on the business advisory board for us, and um, we have traditionally taken a pretty conservative approach with concerns about the overall national economy and what may be happening um, in the out years. Initially, that projection for 14-15, as Todd pointed out, was conservative. They've continued to monitor and move that up, and I think it's the right decision. Um, I'd be interested, though, and, and now may not be the time, but to hear from uh, Mike and Don, maybe even, and Larry and John even a little bit on what their thoughts are with regard to the out years and what they're seeing both from their entities as well as uh, development and permitting and some of those type of things because I think it will help provide some perspective for this body as to kind of what the out years might really look like short of our individual um, thoughts or projections based on the fragility of the, the economy right now. We can come back to that because I have a couple of things that we'll go over, but that's just, I think, a good comment on that point. Uh, on your, for your non-capacity sources, the one that's in purple here, that shows sales tax flow through, that, that number, we don't know if we're going to hit that number. <coughs> um, the revenues, anticipated revenues for sales tax are down a little bit. We're, we're showing roughly about $575,000 shortfall on the sales tax revenues. So that number, um, we, in that meeting um, last week, we decided just to leave that number alone right now, that original estimate, and we would revisit it in the upcoming months as we have more data comes in. Quick question on that. Is that a historical place for us to be at, though, with collections at this point in time? And we see every year at this time that we're, we're low and we're making it up in the out months, or is it an anomaly? It's an anomaly. Hey, 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 any the questions? Qu the quarter cent uh, flow through was was uh, four point seven million roughly. Yes. Yeah, we we bond that. That's the amount that's not that doesn't is free money really. The first part of it you always pledge to it goes towards debt service payment, mm -hmm. and that's the residual that's left over. How much mm -hmm. do we get in total in quarter collections? A, 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 yeah, a little over. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the full high penny, it would be another $11 million. Yeah, it would be about a little over $22 million. Mm -hmm. If you went to a half cent, if we, if we had a half cent. And yeah. you had the reduction in the existing. 
yeah, we would the total that we could levy here, and we're going to talk about that um, a little further on, is um, the most we could levy um, on our own is a half cent. Oh, I got it. I okay. Got it. Okay. I was just trying to see what the impact would be. Okay. But there's still ways collaboratively, to your point earlier, working with our counterparts to mm -hmm. find solutions to work through that. Yes. Yes. Yep. Um, now I'm going to move into the part of the presentation where we're talking about capital funding, referendum options. Um, so we, we, we so, I mean, we, we're trying not to paint a picture. I mean, and it's a bleak picture. I don't know what to say, anything <laughs> except for it's a bleak picture. Okay, um, staff is showing or what they believe is our, unfund, uh, our unfunded needs right now. Again, we would want that those um, at least um, um, verified from an independent study um, that would attest to what the staff is supporting to be what they're recommending to be their unfunded needs. So I, I, I want to I kind of go on now here with the alternative funding options. I want, we have three different ones available to us. And the, the, re, the report, the, the prior board seeing this information but the, um, um, the current board, I don't know if you've seen this already. Right now, we, we levy the one, um, 1. 1.5 mil that is available to us. Um, we, and, um, and that generates roughly, breaks down here on me but I'll, I'll come back to that 28 uh, sorry 28 thank 28 you thank you thank you all these numbers I look you at can't all the remember time. all these numbers <laughs> <laughs> okay. and I know that number but um, what I want to state here is that one mil really equals roughly 18.8 .8 $18 dollars uh, based on our current tax rolls and our current our 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 current tax rolls, as I shared with you, was um, what nineteen point six billion dollars. What is one mil to the average? What one mil for, for every hundred thousand dollar? Hundred thousand. Uh, would no 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 one one mil yeah. for a hundred thousand um, dollar property value. Mm -hmm. well, I got that. It would be a hundred bucks. Yeah. Um, okay. We. My question was more to the average. What is the average home price, Tim, in the whole county? That that's where I was going. The median home price is right around one fifty. One fifty. Okay. Sorry. Don't. Mm -hmm. Gives me time to kind of regroup my thought process. <laughs> um. You have uh, your uh, the different options available to you is you have a capital projects to your a voter referendum that you can go out for. The max that you can levy is of all combined school district millage rates. So I'm going to take you to this report real quick so you can take a look at it right alongside of me. If you look at the 2014-15 year you can see the total school district from um, related millage rate for Osceola County is 7.375 the max you can levy if you go out for this um, capital projects to year capital outlay um, additional mill you can levy up to 10 mil total so it's really 10 mil minus the 7.375 so that's the difference that you could go out and you can levy it's, does that make sense but it's only two years but it's only two years that wouldn't get us very far no mm -hmm. so for going back to what we what i was saying what did, what did orange county just pass didn't they pass a four-year something what was that for ten for, years no, no, for no. the sales tax. For the sales tax. Right. For, for, they passed they a millage, too. Yeah, they passed yeah. a millage, and that was for operating. And that was a four-year deal? I, 
believe it was a four year, but I don't know for sure. It was for operating though instead of capital. It was for operating. One mil for the one. Yeah. Because they're using, yeah, they're using sales tax revenues to pay for their capital needs. So. And it's uh, 157 is the latest number on the median home price. Oh, thank you. I just you looked it up. I just double checked. Yeah. <laughs> so, so for for every mill, and we, and we well, we have two, and 2.6 to work there. I'm just rounding. Um, so for every mill, if we if we go up for two mills there, roughly 36. 37 that would generate about 37 million dollars roughly um, over, per year um, multiply that by two and you use that's how much money that would generate through that referendum now the, the next the next thing I would um, any questions so far on that one just say that number again I'm sorry I missed it. <laughs> okay I, I was saying something else what one mil equals 18.8 and I just said if we went out for just two mils Increase, um, multiply that by two, so 30, 36, 30, 30, yeah, 37. 37. And then you do that for two years, multiply that by two again, and that's how much money it would generate. That's it. And then you got to go back to the well and ask again. Thank you. Sales tax. Uh, um, if, if there's any, no further questions, I'm going to move on to the sales tax. Uh, we're going to get to the uplifting stuff soon. When does that part of the meeting start? <laughs> I thought it was. That's happening on church, a church. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Maybe we should all go now. <laughs> but, 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 but one thing I want to really mention, too, regarding the for, before I keep moving on, the, 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 the total voter, the, the voter support in Orange County to pass not only the sales tax and a capital outlay, um, self-imposed millage rate. I mean, that was incredible, the voter turnout they had for this, and that, that passed it. Mm -hmm. So well, I assume we're going to talk about, if we want to do that, what it takes. But they've got the whole community behind, and they're valuing yes. their schools. Yes. They're yes. valuing education, and they're selling it as a value of education, the value of the community of education. So. Yes. And Broward yes. County School District just passed an $800 million general obligation referendum in 2014. 2012, Miami-Dade County School District passed a $1.2 billion general obligation bond, mm -hmm. and they so they can issue any that amount, any portion of it. right, for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Why don't they just ship that money up to Osceola and <laughs> we'll call it a day? Yeah. We've asked we'll because to share a little bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just as long as I don't have to pay it back. Um, it's, uh, sales tax. Before we go too far ahead on the sales tax, um, Orange County just passed and uh, renewed that. Um, we saw that Brevard County Schools um, just passed theirs. That's going to produce about $32 million for them uh, for the next six years. They per, did a half. Per, yeah, they did, a, they did a half. They went from zero to the half, right? Zero to the yes, half. Yes, that is, that is correct. You can either... Um, Orange County just renewed, right? They that's correct. It, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, that's going to generate $32 million per year um, for six years uh, for Brevard. And... Um, um, so it, 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 it you just know seems the number for orange it's pretty big 198 yeah. million dollars I think that's, that's on what was right yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah but that's 2014's numbers now 2015 yeah. they're projected to be about 198 if I'm not mistaken um, on the sales tax um, and um, we can, we can only go out for um, another quarter um, or we can have a total of a half because if we go out on our own for a half and we get voter approval and they, ex and they approve that, then we forfeit our quarter that we have with the, in partnership with the county. If, it go, if they vote it down, we keep the quarter, right? I mean, you're, yes. it's not an okay. that, That's my understanding, it's and Mr. Brown would have to answer that, that question. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff Poole yes. wants to do this. Yes. But that is my understanding. And, is that um, Larry? I recall. Yeah, and, and I, believe, I believe it sunsets in 2020. Yeah, it is true. It is true. It's the same 30 years. 2025. I believe that agreement could, could not be amended in any way. Yeah, I believe it could. Right. We'll go back and look at it. It's been years since I've looked at it. Yeah. I, I believe it was amended once originally that if we went out on our own, we would forfeit everything. I, I believe Suzanne DeGresta from your firm, Larry, had amended it once already. Um, and to, to allow for um, us to go out, and if and if we did, um, it wouldn't jeopardize our quarter. 
with the county, with that area so local. I'm sure, I hope we're going to talk about this in a little yeah. while, but since we've got the city and the counties here, my concern would be if any of us do anything on our own and get it and are lucky enough to get it through, it's probably going to mess everybody else up yeah. to follow. Mm -hmm. So if we want to do something, I think we better all be I had let's it, um, together. Let's do this real quick in, yeah. in time. Maybe if we'll just park here for me. Don, would you mind coming up and maybe speaking with a little bit of Mike? Um, we'll get some chairs up for you. And I had it right here on my list to, to call for a, the two boards to get together. I don't know why that well, we can't do that. Well, actually, we can't. They used to do that. We yeah. can get all four of them together. The, mm -hmm. the two cities. And even the two cities. That'd be even great. And we all met last week um, and had some conversations surrounding that, the importance of collaboration, um, getting everybody together, the fact that in the past that when it happened, it may have just been one of those things where it's too frequent and the, there wasn't enough to talk about, so it began to fizzle out over time. we got plenty now. There's definitely plenty to talk <laughs> about now. And then um, also... Um, about the uh, you've got your transportation concerns that you guys are looking at and, and anything you're looking at with the sales tax piece there I think if you're inclined and if you're not that's fine but if you're inclined maybe some conversation with us about what you're looking at uh, where you see opportunities for partnership with the school district in this regard as Clarence has pointed out um, if, if anything's going to happen in this community we've got one shot at it to do it and to do it right and to make sure that people see that all of the elected bodies in this community are working together to number one keep our taxes as low as we can on our citizens but also to make sure that we have the revenue to make sure we're providing the level of services that they're demanding and expecting from us so either one of you want to talk on that you're, you're welcome to well uh, mike and i stepped outside kind of had a similar <laughs> conversation there so uh, we'd had leaders lunch last week and, and talked about the the need for all of us to get in the same page if any one of us goes out and approaches a sales tax or geo or, or whatever the case might be I uh, I met with uh, I had strategic planning with the County Commission yesterday uh, we talked about several scenarios uh, oddly enough our deficit is around 650 million dollars <laughs> uh, give or take 50 million one way or another uh, but also really agreeing that uh, one of us gets out in front of the other it's gonna hurt the person that, that, that comes later uh, what we just talked about, and I think there'd be support in my commission, is having a joint meeting with the, uh, the school district, the county, and the two cities, and make a community decision about what's the best way to go, and not let any one of us, that I, I really respect and appreciate your all's point, not let any one of us get out in front of the other. Uh, we, we had talked, and, and when I was talking to Leaders Lunch last week, I didn't realize there was another half penny that might be available to the school district, and I was glad to hear some of that, that conversation. There's an existing penny that's distributed through, uh, I wasn't sure whether that was distributed through interlocal agreement or whether that was part of the voter approved referendum that identified the distribution. What happened was there was a voter referendum, it's the infrastructure say, uh, sales tax surcharge, and after it was already in place, the two cities of the county had it and then they let the school board participate 10%, as I recall. I mean, it's been years since I looked at it. I did the original ILA, but then I guess Suzanne amended it, and I'm, I haven't followed it since then. That's a lot easier to handle than one that was approved by the voters, uh, because one of the concerns was we'd have to go back to the voters and amend the existing penny before we could mm -hmm. access the, the discretionary sales surtax. The, the, the sales surtax that the county has available to it is, uh, is limited to transportation projects and those kinds of things so it couldn't be shared with the schools so our thought is adjust the existing penny one thought adjust the existing penny by a half and then we go seek and give you half of the one that we have and then we go seek a full would net a half penny as a result of doing it so we could net a half as opposed to a quarter yeah Okay. Yeah. So well, we you, can, you, you, you end up netting three quarters then. Three right. Quarters. So yeah. we would actually have a twenty-two million dollar pickup yeah. instead of an eleven million dollar. Pickup. Yeah. Julie, yeah. is that is that possible? No, no eleven is it the three quarter or the limitations 33. on that? If well, we, we already get seven. Seven. Yeah. Okay. One cent. Yeah. The local discretionary sort of tax. Yes. Yeah. And that's limited to one cent, and we might need Larry's assistance. Well, I, I wouldn't necessarily just. I don't think we should get into yeah, the, the nuances right. of it all right, right now because it, it could be a bit complicated right. and. I don't know all the nuances to it, so I'd only confuse it if, if we move forward with it. I, 
from, from some of the, some of the discussion, you know, is are we good partners to go in and do something dual together? Is it? And that's some of the thing we need to talk talk about. But I I hope as a community the answer is yes. Well, that's this, that's the discussion <laughs> I had with one of my commissioners today that this needs to be a community decision. What's best for the community, not necessarily is what's best for any one entity. Mm -hmm. On behalf of Osceola, we're not interested in in getting out in front of something and, and hurting the school district. And from the conversation I've heard from y'all, you're not interested in that from our perspective as well. Right. Mike Scott. Yeah, from the city's perspective, you know, number one, first and foremost, we, we definitely need to get back to doing the joint meetings with the boards. Um, that's something that during the recession, um, and probably I think it was as the recession started, we didn't have a lot going mm -hmm. on. Um, we backed away from that, and um, in the absence of the leadership provided by the elected officials, um, you know, things start falling through the cracks. You don't work together as well. Um, and we're hitting that critical point now where, as Don said, we've got to work together uh, on this solution. We were talking out in the hallway, um, you know, do we back off and, you know, let you all take the lead on the sales tax issue as, as a, you know, suppose we did that, what would happen? And, you know, if you look at it from the standpoint of if we don't do the transportation sales tax, growth is probably going to slow down to the point where your problem's not going to be as major going on down the road. So maybe there's a combination of things that can be done. Maybe it's, it's a joint um, effort uh, to fund both things, transportation and education, um, that gets a little bit of, of everything put forth. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I can tell you that uh, the, we're, we're seeing activity um, and I can't predict what that activity is going to be going into the future, but the way it looks right now, the builders are moving fast and furious, and I don't see it stopping unless we hit another dip in the uh, housing market in a couple of years, which well, I've heard I, some I think say. the only chance we have is the people in this room and the other boards, if we choose to go this route, is all of us unanimous 100% behind it. Everywhere we're at, everybody we talk to, nonstop, because that's the yeah. only way. We're going to have to sell it to the community. Uh, I, I think if we're not all together, if we're already splintered when you start, it might not even be worth it. And to your point, if we build a lot of fancy roads, but we don't have a school to drive to, we <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. We don't need the fancy roads. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I can't speak for Don's board. I can tell you that my city commission, and it was only through some of the conversations that we've had at our smaller meetings, um, that my commission is just starting to get educated to the fact that you all are experiencing a shortfall with regard to... Um, growth in the community and your revenues and that's something that um, I think we need to do more of um, in educating our, our, our local officials that this is a, a real issue that we're going to have to solve and, and I don't know that it's been on everybody's radar until recently. Can, can we get uh, yeah, Melba and you guys or yep. Todd to start working together and plan? Yeah, definitely. Do, we need a, do we need a No, we're good. I think we're all in agreement. Mr. Soda, do you have anything additional or any disagreement on that? No, I'm just waiting for this to continue to explain how this will address the needs that we started here. We started here with a $651 million. <laughs> yeah. dollar. We're hoping that and, and so small. I'm hearing a lot about a one penny, and I see a lot of reactions like, you know, that's not enough. Is it? Uh, we, well, we, I mean, I mean, what are, are we going to go ahead and just partner up and everything and just put a patchwork where it's not going to let us to where we have to be? I mean, but if that is the compromise that we have to make, then that's fine. Uh, I, uh, for me, just to be clear, for me, I wasn't saying that I think the penny's the end. I don't know. Right. It sounds whatever, like, it sounds like whatever we kind of all this. I wasn't saying let's just go out to the penny for getting just, Yeah. I mean, no, I think we got to kind of. I, okay. That's what I figured. No, no. I, I figured no, that we're really I was here. not really saying let's do the penny. I'm saying let's have a conversation about if, if, what it should be. If it ends up that that's the compromise we have to make, then we then we need to be really honest, you know, not just with ourselves, yeah. with with the voters in the community, look, we're not getting what we need, and this is the best we can do. But can is is that the situation? Because I haven't really heard that yet. Yeah, and this is just one of a multi-tiered approach. Um, you know, you, the board just voted on impact fees. We've got our legislative delegation meeting tomorrow. Where we're making an ask to our delegation members to help with some um, gaps that exist in our funding. The continued conversation with the county and the cities with regard to sales tax opportunities. Um, the uh, continued expansion and use of charter schools in our district to provide some additional seats uh, to take some of that capital burden all of, uh, off of us. 
um, all of those options are part of what we're going to have to look at um, to try to figure out how to solve this in the long run. It just seems that our unfunded capital <coughs> needs are at a level right now um, that the, that a penny is almost out of the question. In other words, it's a it's a it's a it's, a, it's something that's going to be difficult to ask, and it's not going to really meet not even close to the needs that we have. And so, yeah, I guess you're saying that there's going to be a big a potpourri of different type of sources that we can go ahead in order to address these capital needs. But the, the amount is staggering. And um, it'd be interesting to hear more about that. So I think that we're going to continue the discussion, yeah. maybe some of it right now. I don't know if the county's working with a referendum consultant, but especially with the complexity such as you're discussing with the different entities and the different alternatives, I would highly recommend that you consider talking with someone. They specialize in doing public polling, and throughout the entire process, they get feedback to determine if the message is off or where. You know, we've done this a few times before. The uh, we haven't decided whether the county's even seeking any anything at all for that matter. What we do believe, though, that it's not really going to be as much about the elected officials that get this done. It's going to be about the business community and the extended citizens and political action committees. And, and we've done estimates before, at least $250,000 is going to be needed to run a campaign, whether it's for the school district or the county or whatever the case. But we're just not, uh, we're certainly not there yet, but I think you're right in figuring out what's important to the people that are going to be voting on this. We also need to be very careful if that is the solution that we don't confuse the voters regarding the current mm -hmm. sales tax that we have in place because that expires, what, 10, 12 years from now? It's 2024, 2026? 20, 2027, I think range. it is. In that range. And the last thing you want to happen Solution. is when we go to renew that, folks yeah. go, wait a second. Yeah. We just gave uh, you that. Yeah. 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 And I think Can you tie the in? extension in with it? I don't know. Something to look at, yeah. The only thing I would say is that I, I understand your point that this does not become the the solution, um, but we have to look at solutions, and this is one of a number that this board and the commissions and the council are going to have to look at to try to figure out how to deal with the um, unmet needs that exist in our community. And so, I, board, just real quick, we're all in agreement. Uh, Tom moved forward with Melba and getting something scheduled with the county commission, the city commission, and the city of St. Cloud yes. Council as well. Um, let's get that conversation going and that will at least move the ball a little bit further down the field in our conversations and where the connection points do and don't exist. Okay. Chairman, my board had one conversation about if we did get a meeting together mm -hmm. that we get someone to facilitate it that would be viewed as just an objective person to just the, the idea of, of, of equal discussion more, more symbolic than anything else and if you don't object to that and the city doesn't that we'll try to identify who we consider to meet that need. No, we're good. You're good. Right? Yeah, I think it's smart. Yes. I say to me, the whole key is even the ones who may not need to participate, I think we're going to need their support for whatever Certainly. this thing may look like. Yeah. Um, the only other thing, and you guys are welcome to speak, if there's anything additional that you wanted to bring up, um, any other comment or conversation from you guys and what you're seeing with regard to? Um, growth, your urban growth boundary, the DRIs that are coming out of the ground, all the things that I know John and Larry and others are working on. Any comment you want to make? Because I know that's part of our conversation and part of our projections of where we're basing this growth and these students coming from. Um, are you guys seeing, you heard that the Business Advisory Board has been conservative in their approach, um, concerned about the out years. Um, have, have you guys been talking about the same? Are you thinking differently? Um, what are you guys looking at at your respective areas? Well, we're hearing, and I don't know where this is coming from, but that, that there's um, some thought that there's going to be a dip in the housing market in the next couple of years. So we're trying to be very careful um, in our expenditures and not get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, and the commission in our retreat on Friday was very cautious to put the goal of utilizing some of our reserves to kickstart um, some major initiatives that we want to get accomplished in the next couple of years, but also being mindful of the fact that we could have another uh, dip in the uh, housing market in the next couple of years. Um, the only other thing that, that, that I would um, um, throw out there, and I'm not sure how much from a, from a number standpoint that this, that there's, if there's any validity to this, but I'd ask that, that our planning staffs in getting together and looking at projections going out into the future really considers the type of the development 
that we're going to see in the future. Um, uh, we, we've done um, pr growth projections in the past that we're, we're a little ambitious given the fact that a, a portion, a good portion of the development we saw during that time was short-term rental. Um, I do know that they uh, generate student, um, uh, you know, students per household, but do they generate it at the same rate as um, a typical household? Uh, same with urban development, and you know, a lot of our focus is going to be after Floor Ridge and the Oaks are, is built out, it, it's going to be downtown development. We're, we're wanting to see a lot of housing units built downtown. Do they have the same student generation per household given that they're more urban in nature, more empty nesters, more young professionals? I, I don't know the answer to that, but that's something I think we should look at so that your projections are based on reality of what we as our local our local governments are planning for the future. Don, I got two questions in that vein. One, we'd sent forward a couple months ago the, uh, I don't know what you call it, request or whatever for the impact fee, <coughs> school impact fee change. Do you know, one, where that stands? <coughs> and secondly, I think we kind of committed to have a conversation about the short-term rental or resort home, whatever we call those things, on whether they are indeed uh, a different classification as multifamily is and uh, mobile home is and if you adopt what we've got we have that conversation in a month and change it would that be yeah it'd, it'd be no problem to come back right no, I mean no. nobody'd say well you just no yeah so the school impact fee scheduled for uh, consideration by the board in April okay. and uh, doing there be no issue with, with, the, with the change so if we've got till April we should we should probably we told them we'd go back maybe and just address it, have the conversation, and if we got plenty of time to achieve, there's no reason not to have that done. Much sooner than later, I, I think there's, I mean, I hear these people chirping, there's a bunch of people, I think several people here waiting for that discussion and an answer. So maybe we can, I don't know if we can touch on that today and either get some direction or get it on our next agenda or whatever we need to do. If we want to talk about it or just have the discussion. Whatever. <coughs> Do you, yeah, Mr. Booth. Yeah, I've heard the one cent transportation tax. <clears throat> uh, are you, but have you had the same discussions as we have? As you're talking about 650 million, like we're talking about 600 <laughs> million, and, and then you're talking about 30 or 33 or 22 million from a from your penny. So, I mean, if you, as the, yeah, as so the commission had that same discussion, we, we, we've had the same discussion. We, we've discussed that if we're, we're levied to be successful, whether you do a pay as you go or you issue debt against it and that complicates it a mm -hmm. bit uh, a full penny you can put 450 million dollars on the streets pretty much right away mm -hmm. uh, but, but but again you, you lose some value because of the cost of, of, of buying that money but yeah we're, we're having the same discussion but I really think that our, our board once they hear the, the condition of the school district they're going to want to do what's again best for, for the community so it may be a matter of one of the two of us either pausing and, and waiting a turn whenever that might be even if it's years out or potentially combining on a on a the same effort but i did it did appreciate it i think my board would be the same that regardless of what's decided even if it's a a sole push on one or the other that we all get behind it regardless of what it is and then Clarence, mr thacker if i may to the conversation regarding the um, resort rental component we definitely want to talk about I don't know if because I want to make sure that uh, growth management has a chance to speak to that as well I don't know if tonight is the night if you guys want to speak to it you can I would actually envision bringing that back up at a later date giving you guys an opportunity to kind of sit and kind of delve through that in detail with us is that good I just think we ought good? to I think we ought to do it sooner than later I agree especially if we've got before April, April to go to the county if we, if, if we are going to make an adjustment I think it'd be nice to so well, let's make a commitment that we'll get that taken care of in February, and we'll have staff coordinate with you guys on when we can all sit down and have that conversation. Is that okay. good, board? Yeah. And a workshop. Yeah, we'll do Somewhere. a workshop okay. set up. The other thing, too, is, um, Mr. Steigerwald, to your point, um, I know John and I, John Adams, had a brief conversation regarding um, the, the way that we build schools, the size we have to build schools, SREF standards, for your um, point with the urban areas. Yeah. Um, there's there's not 70 acres sitting in the middle of your city 
um, that could serve your downtown area the way that we wanted to. And you know, we have Osceola High School; it's gorgeous, right around the corner. Anyway, but um, John's got with his expertise, and, and John, I think you'll agree with me on this. Um, some ideas that we should be looking at as a board on how we do and don't build schools. Is there smarter ways to do it with clustering and community schools and smart growth and some of those pieces? And so I would also ask um, if the board is inclined, then we have that conversation. John, I would benefit from hearing some of that from you with your planning background and some of the things that you think we can look at. Part of that comes down to um, SREF standards and the standards we have to build our schools to based on state statute. So that is something that is um, in the works and our lobby team is working with this board on that already. It's not our priority, top priority, but it is something that we're looking at, but that could help lend to how we deal with some of these things in the future and how we make sure that as you're doing you know, core construction in your city or in an urban area, um, that there's schools that are adequate for that area to service as well. And, and can, uh, you may be the same thing you're asking for, but if we do this, have this conversation too, if John or some, maybe somebody from the county, whoever, could kind of walk us through what the neighborhood, what the long range growth is, the urban centers around the lake, and kind of where you think. So we can start as we look at new schools, where they're going, where they'll be, where the traffic flows will be, what the theory is behind it with the urban centers, neighborhood centers, community centers, and how that works and, you know, what the planning theory is. <coughs> John, I don't ever agree on the planning theories too much, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, but uh, how it works with the idea of reducing trips, reducing buses, reducing so we can, as we go forward, at least yeah. as we're thinking about sites and everything else, we're in conjunction with what the county particularly wants to do with as they're allocating new developments and new. Uh, I agree. And I would just add too, with uh, Mrs. Platt being here, I think um, Carol, you and the Realtors Organization be part of that. We know that there's uh, NAR opportunities for smart growth grants and things that your organization may be able to get a hold of. And so I'd welcome your input in that process as well. We may be, be able to bring in some of our experts from either DC or Chicago area that are studying smart growth patterns, and that can kind of help us with this conversation too. I, I'd like to add as well, oh, did you want to say, Ms. Platt? I would like to, that uh, the board recently met and um, offered that contact I was just going to say, you know, just so I don't forget Tom writing this down, but uh, uh, when we all get together, like I hope we do, I think one other thing too, and I know it's off our topic today, is is our employee health care, and I know we're going through some, um, through some things on that. I'd, I'd love to have that as a conversation where we look at it with the county and the city and sheriff's department and as well. Good. Yeah, and it's 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 different, but it's the same. I mean, we're yeah. we're all trying to figure out how to deal with our budgets and how to deal with the short <coughs> scratch your so, pennies. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything additional on that? Oh, not on that. Okay. I mean, just have a question for you, for you. Have you all calculated how much the transportation sales tax would cost the average resident annually? It ended up being like a it's like a cup of it was a cup of coffee a day it was like fifty five dollars sixty dollars some somewhere in that range for a full annually. penny yeah annually okay. yeah fifty five sixty dollars annually I think is what it was and have you calculated how much is paid by tourists forty two percent forty two that's hot that's good yeah. that's, usually yeah. it's in the range of thirty but we're the tenth largest tourism yes. development collect, tax collector in the country so forty two percent which what discussions we've had it's a makes it an attractive source compared to uh, ad valorem geo or something right $55 a cup of coffee a day it's five dollars <laughs> that's, that's, that's only a week <laughs> <at> starbucks <laughs> i said a day or a week i guess it was the week. that's making it at home yes, it, yeah, no, there's addiction we're talking about here right good well guys we appreciate you being here and being willing to speak with us on this as well we'll look forward to getting our boards together here very soon and yes. we're all in agreement with yes. the idea of having an outside facility unanimous to consent that's perfect thank you thank you appreciate it. don mike thank you very much thank, thank you guys. thanks for coming guys thank you beth thank you as well Absolutely. todd i know I, I cut you off for that portion of it so hopefully you know where you left off and you can pick up Seamless. <laughs> I, want to ask, I want to ask the board, um, what is their flavor? How do you want me to continue going on with the general? And our next discussion would be on general obligation bond. Do you want to have that discussion? I would like you to explain the different sources you have here. Sales tax, I think we've done it. We kind of get what we understand mm -hmm. what a penny is at the grocery store. 
what the general obligation bond is. I don't understand how the capital two-year deal really helps us, <laughs> other than get us in trouble. Yeah, it's too short. <laughs> yeah, it's too short. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an ask that's, uh, I mean, we're worried about making an ask that hurts something coming up in 12 years, a yeah. renewal. Mm -hmm. To ask for something every two years, it's, uh, nobody will ever understand it's the same thing we're asking. It, it, I think that's, I understand that one enough to think maybe not such a good idea. So maybe you can explain them to me. And it's required that it's only in two year increments on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you can explain kind of how the general. I, I'm, I'm a little concerned that there's only. How many of those are out in this state? Two or three in total? There's yeah. Dade and Broward. Dade and Broward. Recently. Uh, scares me for Dade to be our model. Yeah. <laughs> so. there, there haven't been that many general obligation referendums in the past several years because of the economy and, and because of the burden already on residents. Those are, those are the two large ones that school districts have done. Can you just what is a general obligation bond as opposed as opposed to a reg just asking for a two mil increase? The general obligation bond is asking for a millage increase that allows is sufficient to pay debt service. So for the can, whole thirty years or whatever. For a full thirty or for whichever you choose. So that millage increase can vary based on the the taxable <coughs> value of, right. of your base. And that is on top of the ten mils, your ten mil limit. So that's okay. there, there's no limit to that. So if if we did that, um, Let's say you do it. You get approval for three hundred million dollars. Yes. You tap into it as you need it. Let's say we need a hundred this year. Their millage hit would only be based on the debt service or whatever right. of the hundred. That's correct. So it would yes. you would draw as you. Right. And Todd has calculated for per hundred thousand taxable value that would be about thirty one dollars a year. Now most for three hundred million for one hundred okay for one hundred. So we're back on, to the hundred dollars. Yeah, now. and that's based on the current cash flow. Right. Now the benefit is well, if the tax, tax base increase, 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 and you have growth, then you can actually pay that spread out more. Correct. Affects the average home. So price. that would be a changing number for everybody. Yes. Based on that. Yes. Okay. And it's and another <clears throat> downside that it, it's often considered is that it is not paid by tourists. Right. It, that's one benefit that's often cited with the sales tax. What, what else is the downs? I mean, if this was a great idea, it seemed like more than Dade and Broward would have done it. What else is the... It, it's really the economic and um, psychological state of Florida residents that um, it's been a population that's moved from other places a lot of times that has had... Uh, Retirees. Yes. And so they, they a lot of times feel I've already paid for schools where, which are, where I lived before and I don't want to pay for it now. But I think we've seen that change where you have these very large asks by Miami-Dade for $1.2 billion and That's Broward, what theirs was? $1.2, yes. And, and how, how long is it? How long? Have they tapped into it at all yet? Yes. Think? They have um, issued $200 million so far. So they can issue... I don't know if there's an ultimate time limit to say if they have to do it within the next 10 years or so, but they can issue up I'm to sure nobody knows what Dade County's total uh, property value is, do you? Um, I do know that I'm the... I'm just curious how that compares. I have their tax bill. The, the, per, yeah. the per $200 million increment that they were looking at, the value or the cost to the average actually was per $100,000 was $5. I was going to say, because they got to be it's, way higher. You know, the one point is four times different. what we're looking for, and their value has got to be way more than four times mm -hmm. our 19. Yeah. Yes. And then the, the key to that is that any money borrowed uh, through that GO bond needs to be offset by millage rate increases right. every single year to help deal with the debt service. Zone. So it becomes an additional burden on those that do already right. own properties, already paid impact fees, and have already been paying that property tax. No, I, yeah, that, yeah. One key that's been very important, either whether it's sales tax or GO, has been an economic impact study that Todd had mentioned, which looks to the number of jobs it's created, the total number of billion dollars in impact. I think those have been very valuable tools that both those counties used. Is that something, we, what kind of money is it to do yeah, one that, of those studies? That was my question. I'm not certain. I, they both used a firm called Washington Economics Group, which is based down in Miami. Um, there's certainly many others, Fishkind and Associates, is mm -hmm. here locally. Yeah. They're excellent. They would mm -hmm. they would have in-depth knowledge can, of the area. Can we get that 
can we talk to fish and hire somebody local? Just find out, get you an idea, so when we have a meeting, get a number, because it's probably something we could all share. In. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and that was it's like critical because that was one of the things I yeah. wanted to ask as well as the cost and the timeline. <coughs> Just so what's the timeline to get something like that done? The uh, impact study. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I would guess maybe three months, two or three months. Can we find that out too, Todd? Or you yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. For you. And this impact study would be, you know, to assess these different options, right? That That's, the impact yeah. study assessed to how much um, the economic impact would be of the general obligation mm -hmm. bond. It tax. it also looks at the fact that if we have a general bond for three hundred million, that we're going to pump three hundred million back into the economy, yes. right? Exactly. Yes. So that has yeah. there's two impacts. There's right. a negative yeah. impact, and then there's the positive impact. Correct. And but I'm sure need, a more broad and it, could be done yeah. looking at the sales tax also and maybe evaluating the effects of both of those. And then right. the, maybe the con did it, it, we just discussed Orange County doing both, although it wasn't a, a GO bond, but it yeah. was uh, millage, millage and uh, sales yeah. tax. And so they would be able to look at both a sales tax and a GO bond. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Can we find out too? I know, uh, I'm pretty sure the Orange County one was either four or five years. Um, and I know it's an operating fund money, but can we find out? Could that only be four or five? I mean, it, it can only be for four years. It could only okay. So by legislation or whatever. That's right. Okay, so that that answers that question. Mm -hmm. And then um, yeah, and I I, I want to mention to, to touch on what you were mentioning too. The indirect benefit to that too is actually a benefit almost to your employees, but because it creates a, a more um, nurturing work environment to go into. Because and st students really excel more in more of a, in, in newer schools, and that's and some of the things that through this whole exercise that I've been finding through all these different studies that were done. So I just wanted to mention that too. That's the trick is getting everybody to understand the value. Yeah, there, there's, <laughs> there's a there really there's is a, a value to everything, value. Yes, even there's people a, without children. Yes, mm -hmm. and there are lots of model materials out there that both of those counties have used successfully. Right. Let me ask this: at the at the risk of repeating any ground that we've already covered, because we did kind of get off a little bit of your presentation. Um, Todd, is there anything else specific that you feel like you need to cover uh, for the benefit of the board during this workshop that we haven't already hit, either through conversation, questions, or dialogue? And then board, is there anything additional that we need to dig into that you need more information on that we haven't already received? At, at, at this time, I, I don't think I have anything further. I just wanted, um, there is a timeline of events that would have to occur eventually. I just want to uh, bring that to your attention, and we'll discuss that in future meetings if, if we do explore this. Um, and also, uh, just to rehash what Julie had mentioned brilliantly, is that if, if you go out for $100 million, I just want you to have this in your head, if you go out for $100 million based on your current tax roll right now, that would cost, and you financed, financed that over 30 years at 4%, that's what we were just using for our estimates, it's about 0 0.311 mills right now. So I just want to put that in your head so as we continue working through this scenario. But that, that's all I have. You so. have the uh, option, too, by the way, for us. Yes. Yes, that's, yeah, it's, it's in your presentation. I covered it for good every angle. Okay. And that's, the, yeah. Um, uh, <coughs> that, I guess my question was, uh, It wouldn't be beneficial then to go for a specific thing saying that Boggy Creek High School cost X number of dollars. Let's go for that. Just that. that it, it, you you would want to put more into a my concern would be the piecemeal and having to ask again when you sure, need sure, sure, sure. Two. You have to have community su support from the entire district mm -hmm. population, so a lot of people wouldn't benefit from that school. We really see a need at all of our schools. I understand. And, and that's yeah. what Clyde was, um, I think we touched on that maybe a little bit. But also in your handout too, I just, you had asked from me of the other of the other school districts and counties yeah. that are levying the mm -hmm. SIR tax right now. This is as of 2014, and this was the revenues that were generated. So I just, the orange indicates that it was just related, um, just for that half, half cent for the school district. And the blue was a partnership with your local government on an infrastructure surtax. So that's what this this is showing you. So I want you to just to make sure that you um, Mike, do you have this it. slide that shows 
Orange County at 193 and us at 11. <laughs> We've got a different slide that talks about how much money Orange County generates per new student versus us. So it's, it's a more in context. Is there some bigger, using gross numbers that would be <clears throat> Oh, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty gross difference. Yeah, a couple of quick things, and Tom, I'll, I'll come to you in a sec. Um, four Corners, and it's just brought up in, in passing, is there um, potential equity in that property that we should be exploring selling that property? Um, what, what's the, and I know we have to do an appraisal and all that, but what's your general thought on that with the current debt that's in place? I know you guys are looking to refi that, you said? Yeah. Um, the, I, I believe the intent, and I'm, I'm going to go off of memory here, is that the original intent was is that it would operate as a charter school until that until it was um, debt service was paid in full. Now that is property of the school district. So if there's a need in the future, and that's what they were looking at, if there's more students, Osceola County students that would be occupying that west side over there, and we would be able to take that school back just for Osceola County now and make sure that all of our students on that side have an, um, a, a, a home to go to because really the, who's really benefiting from that is our Polk County friends sure. right across the other line. We only have a small number of students in that school and we're on the hook for that. Right. Um, that well, and that's part of why I ask. I'm the chairman of that board um, and I know the layout and the landscape of what's going on and I'm not saying that we should sell it, but if we're looking at all of our options and we realize that we're getting very little student stations out of that school, um, is it wise for us to explore that as part of our many solutions that we discuss? And obviously, the key component would be whether or not there's any equity in that property. If there's not, then it's something worth talking about. So, just a just a thought. Um, the other thing, Mike, did you have anything additional with all the work that you and John and Todd have been doing that you want to bring up to the board this evening? No. Okay. Um, Tom, I know you had some. Um, Mr. Booth was uh, asking about you know, going mm -hmm. out for particular, I guess, mm -hmm. projects, um, and you know, whether it be a sales tax or a bond referendum. You know, one of the things we would do as staff is we would look at each individual school, and each school would know, you know if we were to re receive a, a, a bond referendum or a sales tax. These are the projects that we would be you know, working on at, at your individual school. So every community would, would know that their school or schools are, are, sure. are, are part no, of this. No, I, I knew what the response was, would be. I just wanted to to make sure that wasn't an option. Mr. Walter, I know from growth management you came specific for this. Was there anything specific that you wanted to mention during our workshop, or are you just here with yours tonight? Just here. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, Okay, board, so action from here, unless there's something other, is uh, we'll move forward with getting a workshop put together in February to talk about the resort uh, rental component, uh, plan a time to get together with our counterparts in the county and the two cities and begin having that process, and then also, Todd, beginning to explore what the cost and the timeline would be for our economic impact study. Um, obviously, the sooner the better. We've got to make some serious decisions on this. Uh, board, am I missing anything else from an action standpoint that you're looking for? Good, Mr. Soto. Mr. Thacker, both you're good. Okay. Just, just for clarification, February, a workshop in this setting with growth management to talk about the short term rentals, West Side Overlay area. Yes, sir. Are we talking about urban schools? Yeah, I, th I thought we were going to combine. Yeah, I think Are we, we going to have time for all? That's what I want to make sure. Yeah, I would. Okay. I would suggest, board, with your indulgence, that we make the time for that. And as we're exploring Fine. all of these, Let's sit down if it, if it means two hour workshop, then let's do it and let's explore everything that we need to. We could we could break it up at least. No break. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because I don't know. Is and then too long for you? And then Mrs. Platt, you're going to want to do the same think, as well. We're going to want uh, you and any I of your counterparts, my counterparts uh, as well, to be a part of that conversation and what these impacts are with these type of decisions on uh, current homeowners, property values. Um, obviously, everybody knows, and I've talked about it here probably more than you want to hear, the impact of these type of decisions on real estate values, on private property rights clearance. I know you've talked about that, about home ownership rates, stability in our community, and all those components that lend to this whole conversation. So, uh, Carol from the Realtor Organization as well, I know I would value that input, and I know that we can get a lot of resources to explore this as well. We have
And Tom, would you make a point to include Mrs. Platt on your emails and the invitations regarding it? Did you mention the joint? Yes, I did. Is there a timeline for that? I think ASAP. So same thing for the joint meeting with the county and the cities, just as quickly work with their respective managers and supervisors. Yeah, we're trying to figure out how that was um, put together in the past. I know it's, just, it's worked in the past. I'm going to figure out how that was worked, where it was held, and we'll go from there. We'll get it figured out. Okay, good. Going around, we all good? Mr. Okay. Phelps, you good? And I just want to thank everyone for their discussion. Thank you to staff for the other presentation, um, and also to you know, the county manager and the city manager for being here. Um, I think it speaks volumes to you know, the relationships that we have within our county, uh, that we you know, have the county manager and the city manager here, uh, and the willingness to, for all boards to come together. Uh, I think, um, I can't speak for Clyde, but in our conversations that this is what we've been asking for is um, and wanting is uh, all the groups to come together. So very positive and looking forward to that discussion. And yeah, hopefully we have Jay's vacation schedule. Yeah, yeah, can we get that? <laughs> just, I'm not Jay, I'm just kidding. I'm not even going to comment. Our, our no. community will definitely be Now he's watching. You got to rip, rip Jay. Thank you, yeah, Jay. Well, thank yeah, you yeah. very much for the time. Mr. Cease? No, I'm fine. Julia, can we get some Mr. Soto, you're good? I am. Thank okay. you. Um, a couple well quick things. One, again, my apologies. Not feeling well. Uh, don't forget for everybody here, everybody watching, and uh, tomorrow's State of Education, I'd ask that you please make a point to attend that. Uh, part of what we're talking about is the impact on education with regard to economic development, um, our post-secondary enrollment rates, and what we're trying to do to make sure that we're laying the foundation for the future economic opportunities of Osceola County. So this is going to be a great opportunity for you to hear about that. If you're already planning to come, great. If not, I'd invite you to, and I'd ask that you extend that invitation to others as well. This time, we'll stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.